Zion, the baptizing church. We love God's word. Welcome to today's message. you spread your arms in our midst and let everyone touch your essence beyond the words of the preacher let the speaking provide a conduit for you to minister your reality to the heart of everyone in this place and following on through the internet I ask oh God that the warmth of your spirit might descend and let every infirmity be swallowed up by your reality in the name of Jesus make us whole and let your name be glorified in Jesus mighty name you may be seated God bless you We'll still continue with Bible study. Um, tonight will be John chapter 16. We'll take it from verse 12 to verse 16. 12 to 14 because of our time. And we'll pray together. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Albeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. Hallelujah. Jesus said that I have so many things to tell you. But you cannot bear them now. That means in the ministry of Jesus, the stature of his audience had a way of limiting his deliverables. For Jesus, what he spoke in ministry was not based on the availability of utterance or revelation. He normally conducts a measure. There is a scanning of discernment that he does to ascertain your stature. And that which he will say to you is consistent with the stature that you have. And in the book of John chapter 16 verse 12, it was as if Jesus was experiencing some form of ministerial frustration because he was loaded with matter, spiritual matter. But uh, his audience placed a limitation on the flow. I, I know it's, it's difficult for you to understand that. All right, let me explain. There is this prophet that is most revered because of his depth in the prophetic gifting. And I don't know what happened before, but there's heavy protocol around him. You need to go through like three screening points before you're allowed to see him. 
but he is rich in the prophetic grace and because of how spontaneous he is he is well sought after so this market woman that sells by the roadside was making an attempt to reach this prophet survived the first screening survived the second screening survived the third screening and in the lobby before you see the prophet his pa comes out and he looks he, he takes his own scan and just in case you do not quite fit into what his scan is expecting you you have to start the process again so she, she attempted it twice and uh, became frustrated and decided not to try again and it came to pass that this great prophet was going to redemption camp and he had a flat tire and his car stopped in front of the woman's shop and the PA happened not to be present that day. So she just ran to him. And while he came out of the vehicle, he looked at her and he began to download. And he traced her challenges to several transactions that her mother has done. It was her mother that was taking her around for prayers. And so she was confused. Because of her confusion, the prophet downloaded more, mentioned names, dates. So she was convinced that what he was saying actually came from God. But before the prophet could tell her how to make use of the revelation that was downloaded, the driver had finished swapping the tires. And so that insight that was meant for redemption became the basis of a civil war that has lasted more than five years now. That's what happens when there are downloads given to people that do not have the stature to handle revelation. And so even though you might think Jesus is refusing to download, maybe he didn't get the signals right that day but you may not understand that there was a deeper kingdom principle that was at work in his ministry and he said I have so many things to tell you it's obvious you need to be educated but I'm constrained you don't seem to have the stature to handle what I'm carrying at the moment however I'm going to keep that which I carry for you, I will not keep it from you, but I keep it for you. Because a new regime is about to come. And in this new regime, there is a personality that is going to be the principal of this new regime. It's just like uh, in the university. Are you with me? I'm trying so hard to make it simple. Because we are going far today. Hallelujah. He said, It is obvious that I have limitations in communicating the mind of God in its fullest extent to you because of your obvious insufficiency. But there is a personality that is coming to take the stage. In the day that personality comes, your lack of stature will not be a problem. Because he has a different approach. He uses a different teaching aid. He can accomplish what I am restrained from accomplishing now with his own method. Are you with me? Stay with me. I would like to give you an example before I proceed. In the university I studied one of the science courses and it happens to be that in the sciences what we do is we get the notes of our seniors and when we see that this course is theoretical we say okay this is an A theoretical A theoretical A mathematical maybe B B I don't like physics <laughs> So courses that have to do with physics, I have to read so much because it's not something I like. So there was one of these courses that was purely theoretical and we had already counted it to be an A. And unfortunately our lecturer went on sabbatical leave. 
they had to draft another lecturer to take the course. This lecturer studied in Germany. His notes are in German language. After his first degree in quantum chemistry, he did a second degree in physics, another second degree in um, electrical and electronics engineering, another master's degree in biological sciences, another master's degree in mathematics, another master's degree in quantum chemistry, that's fine, before he went to attempt his PhD. Because his PhD incorporated all of these courses. He was working on dual fluorescence. Uh, you know when... when he, if you cut off the tail of a lizard, it will grow back. But if you cut off your phalanges, it will not grow back. So he was studying what was in the tail of the lizard that made it possible for regeneration. So he had to do all of these courses for him to be able to attempt that. So in Germany, he was awarded a doctor of science. And so that means he can teach in any science department worldwide. If it's science, he can. He can replace any lecturer on any course. And so he was the one that was drafted to take this course that was purely theoretical. And he came to the classroom. The first thing he did was to derive the Schrodinger e equation. <laughs> he transformed a theoretical course to a mathematical course. Now the question is, what changed? Is it the course that changed? Is it the lecturer that changed? And because people could not understand the approach of this new lecturer, even though the course didn't change, they failed. Jesus is introducing a new lecturer. He will do well to understand his own approach towards the achievement of the economy of God. Uh, I know you like the method that Jesus is using. But there is another principle that is coming to take the stage and you must understand his approach and that is why Jesus decided to give us quite a boisterous introduction that will aid us take advantage of the new regime that God is bringing. Now, in order to make us appreciate this new lecturer, he told us his style and his limitation. His own style in furnishing the mind of God is that he brings the things of the kingdom to us in simple, plain language. What he's transmitting to us is actually spirit and life, but his conduit are words. But when this other principle comes, he doesn't do words as much. He has a different approach because he guides men into the reality of the things he would have said. So that when they touch those things, they will be the ones to talk about it. And in that way, none of us will be a counterfeit. Everyone will be original because you have had a first-hand encounter with this personality. Now, let's take it one by one. Let's try to look into the introduction that Jesus did about this new lecturer. Then eventually, if we have time, we'll talk about his own style of administration. Okay? First of all, Jesus identified him as the spirit of truth. That's the identification. Spirit of what? And within the limits of my understanding of scripture, there are two ways by which the spirits are identified in scripture. One of the ways is that spirits are identified consistent with the territory that they operate. So you have... Um, 
prince of Persia, the prince of Lagos, prince of Greece. That means spirits happen to be territorial, but that's not the subject. That's number one. And spirits also can be identified by their most predominant character. So when such a spirit takes advantage of a host, the way you will know that it is that spirit that is in charge is that he leaves a signature of his most predominant character on that host. So you have stuff like spirit of infirmity, unclean spirit. Are you with me? Because they leave the signature of their most predominant character on their host. So it is through that host that they are known. Now Jesus, in attempting to introduce this principle, called him the spirit of truth. So it is by the second classification that Jesus introduced this personality that was coming to take up the stage. Are you with me? Right. The question now is what is the meaning of spirit of truth? That's where we need to go. Then you will not understand why Jesus calls him that. Because that is a full description of his approach towards achieving the purpose of God in your life and in my life. In this day, we will need to go beyond the surface and lay claim to the reality. Because the storms are coming and God will have us take root and to fraternize deeper with his spirit. When we walk with reality, then we'll be able to interpret situations and circumstances accurately. Are you with me? Right, spirit of truth. If you, if you look at that introduction intellectually, what you come up with is a spirit that has truth. Spirit of, maybe spirit that has truth. Let's probe further to find out what Jesus meant when he made that introduction. Can you help me, technical man, with um, First John? First John chapter five, verse five. First John chapter five, verse five. Ah, and just like uh, we said yesterday. Once the Holy Ghost comes, his concentrated presence will stop talking. You know, it's high voltage. Mm. <laughs> so we are in for the voltage. So what we are doing now is to set up the conductors in place. And once the surge, there's a surge, everything will stop. First John chapter 5. Okay, it's on the screen already. Now, I'd like us to take a scripture first. Can you jump to verse 7 first? Let's, um, the Bible says this is, this is a disclosure. This one is a revelation, All right? There are many statements that were made subsequently before this revelation and after this revelation, but this statement is a revelation. If this statement was not made, you will not know that this reality exists in the spirit. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The word record is the same word for witness. So there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Right? Okay, so. Someone might ask. What's the importance of witness? You must realize that every brand, anything that God is doing, that he has released into this earth, 
In order for it to be accepted as authentic, God must bear witness about it. The spirit of witness is um, one of the ways by which we can confirm that a product is authentic. When I knelt down in my prayer room, praying, and God spoke to me many years ago that I've called you to be an apostle, I didn't know what who an apostle was and what the word apostle meant. But I had it in my closet. And it came to pass. Many years later, I finished ministering somewhere and a young man walked up to me and he said, while I was ministering, God spoke to him that you are an apostle. You see, that thing that happened to me in the closet that nobody knew about, the Spirit of God witnessed the same to another man and I was not in control of the studio when that witness took place. And it confirmed the same thing that I've received in my spirit. Before anything that God does is established, he provides witness as reinforcement and support system. It is on the strength of that witness that uh, that, that which God is doing begins to take root in the earth. And the Bible says there are three personalities in the heavens that bear witness. You saw their names. The Father, the Word, and what? The Holy Ghost. And it happens to be that their witness is one. Now, let's jump to verse 5. I just wanted us to see this before we begin to take our trip from verse 5. Because verse 5 is a question. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Hallelujah. I need to explain that. If I had more time, we would have extended our Bible study. To begin from the book of Genesis chapter 4, that was the first time the concept of the cosmos was mentioned. You will notice, are you with me? Stay with me, stay with me. You will notice that the Bible says after that Cain received judgment from God, he departed from the presence of God. That means he didn't want anything to do with God anymore. He didn't want to subject himself to the principles of God. So he departed from the presence of God and went and established a city in the land of Nod. That means that city and that civilization that um, Cain was establishing was a godless civilization. There was no restraint in that city. But even though there was no restraint, because they were departing from the presence of God, it took how many? I won't do it, but I'll just show you. I won't. Genesis chapter. Four. We won't press, we won't press. I want to show you something. Genesis 4. Are you there? Okay, this drama began from verse 16. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. And he built the city and called the name of the city after his son, Enoch. And unto Enoch, was born Irad, and, on, and Irad begat Mehujael, and Mehujael begat Methusael, and Methusael begat Lamech. How many generations now? Oh, you are not following me. How many generations do we have? Four generations. Uh, so it was in the fourth generation after the departure. Are you with me? From the presence of God that Lamech came. It was in Lamech's time that, you know, he was the one that pioneered polygamy. Now, this was a civilization that was established apart from God, but it yet took four generations for a man to be bold enough to take in two wives. So you, are, you are not with me. <laughs> there was still some form of regulation until a generation came four generations down the line where 
another layer of possibility in darkness found expression and Lamech was empowered to create another pattern. Are you with me? And so this, is, I don't have time to walk it. It's a long journey. Many things were worked out. Many pioneers came to add to that civilization that was established apart from what? Don't forget that. These were the pioneers of what John eventually through prophetic sight called the cosmos. And it was John that had the greatest revelation of the world system because he mentioned the cosmos much more than any other preacher in the entire Bible. Now, when that civilization began to grow, meanwhile, there, were, there was another civilization. This was the civilization of Cain, that Cain pioneered. I used to tell with me. There were still some guys that did not go with Cain. Those ones were still trying to see if there was any possibility with God. But Cain had gone to establish his own system. And this system was growing very large. By the time we go to Genesis chapter 6, you are going to see how that Cain's system was growing larger than the other system that he left. Because if you start an adventure and you remove righteousness from it, initially it will look as if fraud pays faster. Corruption thrives so quickly. You can make quick money. That's the kind of thing that we see in Genesis 6. Men began to multiply. Meanwhile, the foundation was wrong, but there was multiplication. There was evidence. There was breakthrough. And by the time we go to the book of Judges, you will discover that the civilization that God established, that other civilization threatens its existence, its purity. Israel will begin to worship God now, serving God, worshiping Jehovah. And the next thing you will see is that somebody will bring one idol. And before you know it, Israel has moved out. And Israel is in sin. They have forgotten Jehovah. A prophet will be crying, repent, repent. Danger is coming, danger. Oh, they won't hear until danger comes and sweeps the entire nation. And then they will now be in captivity. They will now say, oh, God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac. And then God will arrange a rescue strategy and bring them back to him. And you know, a few years after their deliverance, they will go that same way. Why is it that they are not going extreme with God? They are always going in one direction, away from God. Because that's the civilization that Cain established. It's a civilization that was established apart from God and it is designed to take men away from God. So, spiritual scientists now discovered that there was a system at work that was working in the context of, of human endeavor that had the capacity to take men away from God. You see, when you come into the banking system, for instance, and then, you know that for you, as a female person, well endowed and then they now tell you how the system works and this your beauty has a value here the system is built on several principles that are not righteous it is Cain's civilization that is running that platform and you come there as a son of God you are supposed to raise the standard and then you begin to find contention and persecution because the system is running with the principles of Cain are you still with me? Many people have got into those systems and they found themselves drifting, how? Away from God. That science is locked on the foundations that men like Cain pioneered. Are you still with me? It seems there's somebody here that, that was hit in the banking wall. You drifted because the amen went down. I noticed... <laughs> You don't need to decide to get involved. The system can work things out. And they, at the end of the day, you will be away from God. Do you understand? You don't need to agree. No, just flowing with the system alone guarantees that your end point is where? Away from God. So the question here is, who is he that overcomes the war? Because a normal human being cannot. 
There is no school you can go to that you'll be so discerning enough to survive the system, to overcome it. It is so ancient, more ancient than your grandfather. Say the only one category of people, those are them that believe that Jesus is the Son of God. So Jesus establishes a command power in their heart. That's where they are regulated from. When the world system begins to pull at them, and the command tower pulls also on the inside. So they carried out a research and found out that the only people that survived the system were people that were locked on the government of Jesus. Now after this knowledge, the next thing we need to find out is how to identify the real Jesus. Oh, you're not? Are you still with me? We have to have a meticulous way of identifying the real Jesus because deliverance in this case is tied to believing in Jesus. So a fake can come and say, I am Jesus. In order to have, avoid that, some accreditation had to take place. Next verse, please. The real Jesus came by water. And he came by blood. I need to explain that. The real Jesus. So if you find anybody that says he's Jesus and he, and he doesn't pass the water test, don't take him seriously. John chapter 1. Don't forget why we're doing what we're doing. We're still trying to find out what is the meaning of spirit of truth. Spirit, spirit of truth. John chapter 1 verse 29. The next day, John seen Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore, I am come baptizing with water. So baptism with water. The reason why John baptized with water was that baptism was a strategy by which Jesus could be manifested to Israel. Now, there were many things that happened in John the Baptist's uh, baptismal service. Many people were blessed. Many people came and repented. All kinds of things took place, but that was now not why John was there. John was there because baptism was given to him as a strategy through which the baptizer can be identified. Because this is the Baptist. The Baptist in his baptism will unveil the baptizer in fire. That was why John says, in ranking, I'm not worthy to touch, to un unbuckle the latchet of his sandals. Because I am just the Baptist. And in my baptism, what I do is intended to unveil the baptizer. And this is the testimony of John. The identity of Jesus was unveiled when he came out of the water. And the Bible says that he was praying. The alignment of heaven was affected. And the Holy Spirit descended in bodily shape like a dove and, and stayed on him. That was a sign that he received in the wilderness. And John says that I saw it and I bear record. This one is the Son of God. That means Jesus' identity was revealed by water. That's the first point. We are talking accreditation. You know he was veiled by his body. His reality was concealed. Uh, one of the strategies by which his reality came out. Testimony and witness came from heaven. Do you realize that the two other witnesses in the heavens? So what happened in Jordan was a day of witness. We, we don't have time to press that to press that because there are several of us here you, your identity in the spirit is not known mm, we are not sure of it because your day of witness has not yet come 
You, you still say I'm a staff of Zenith Bank. That's the mundane definition of yourself that you know. But you don't know your shape, you don't know your tribe, and obviously you don't know your language. You, are, you have an identity crisis. It is by witness that men are known. So, and in the case of Jesus, a mighty spiritual ceremony had to be conducted around the waters of, of Jordan. And as he came out praying, his identity was unveiled. The testimony was so clear. And if everybody was in doubt, not that day, anyone that was by the waterside saw the omens that manifested and knew that this man is a significant man. And the Spirit of God rested and remained upon him. John now said, these were the articles I received that mandated me to begin my baptism. And in that capacity, in the capacity of my calling as, as a revelator, I bear record, Matus, I bear record that this one is what? Son of Secondly, uh, he was also revealed by blood. Now, let's do a little theology of blood so that you know the properties of blood. Then we'll draw it into the time of his crucifixion. Right? Uh, I think we need to do Genesis chapter chapter 4. Is it Genesis chapter 4? Yeah. Verse 8. Genesis 4, 8. Oh. All right. Genesis 4, 8. Stay with me. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Those of you that have been called into the Nigerian bar, we have a serious case here. And the case that we have here is a case of lack of witness. There is no eyewitness on the scene and there is no expert witness that has the competence to bring out an autopsy that will influence the direction of the emphasis of judgment. All right? I'm about to show you something. Those of you called to the Nigerian bar. Okay? He slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, because the context now is a court session. There were many things that Cain did not know. One of the things he was ignorant of was that there are four materials, four things that though they are physical, they have capacity to interact with the supernatural and the invisible realm. And one of those things happens to be blood. Blood is intelligent. Blood has vocabulary. And blood has volume. You know when you put your, your, your radio disc, you put it on volume 2. Yeah, it has volume. Because the volume of the cry of the blood of Abel was so intense that it summoned the court. A writ of summons had to be generated on the strength of the cry of the blood of Abel. And the court of heaven had to sit. So what we are reading in that next verse is... The proceedings have begun, and what was going on there was cross-examination. Where is Abel, thy brother? Cross-examination has started. The court case is rolling on. The proceedings have begun. Are you still with me? Now, all of these things were made to be on the account of the cry of blood. That means you need more than MBA more than the Nigerian Bar Association for you to feature in this kind of court that can take witness from blood. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you still with me? Now, so when the cross-examination began and, and, and the question was, where is Abel, thy brother? You know, his response was very tight. Unfortunately for him, his response would have made meaning to mortals, but he was addressing immortals. Am I my brother's keeper? That means he's trying to stand on the fact that there's no witness. He says, sorry. There are several other things that can witness apart 
from physical eyewitnesses in this in this um, legal system blood can witness huh? he didn't know that and just to clear his doubts that he was actually addressing a company of entities that he was not well acquainted with the case file was brought this is the case file for further revelation on how the case was captured in the file and according to the case file what was written there was that the voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from where it's not that's not all Aye. Ooh. now wait this is the judgment all right but i want you to see something that is in the judgment that i would like us to extract and we we'll use it as a principle are you there he said now thou art cursed where did the voice cry from he cried from where from the ground he said now thou art cursed unfortunately the question that he was asked where is abel thy brother was the last time he was allowed to talk in this court By the time his case file was brought and it was evident that the voice of his brother's blood was what provoked the realm. He couldn't speak again. He accepted his guilt. So he said, now that would cause from the earth. Now, wait. That same point where, you know, the earth did something that we, that we don't normally think it can do. It opened his mouth and received his brother's blood from his hand. So, um, that's a unique manifestation of how the earth can operate. It means that the earth was in custody of the violation. Because it was the earth that received the blood out of what? His brother's hand. It was that same ground that the voice of his brother's blood cried from. Are you, are you with me? Did you get it? Now, I would like us to that means it was as if the ground took inventory of what was spilled. Can you see this Lego system that the testimony of the ground can be invoked? I don't want to go further. But this is the blood of an innocent man. In the case of Jesus, it was the blood of a righteous man. And Jesus was coming with the cross. You remember all the things that happened at the cross side. And when the blood of Jesus hit the ground, the ground has to sample it. It has to read it. It has to understand it. It was a process of understanding that blood that generated earthquake. It means that the earth is not modified to understand that kind of blood. So the first omen that took place was an earthquake. Second omen that took place was that the garment of the Holy of Holies was torn from top to bottom. That's the second omen. I've explained this before so you know what it means. Some people here, I, I've seen a few people that were somewhere where I did this teaching. Let me still say it. Curtains don't tear from top to bottom. Our house in the village where my grandfather, the monarch, stayed, they renovated it, but they left his curtain as a sign that he stayed here. Many people stayed here. The curtain is totally rent, but the top of the curtain is still intact. You can still see how the material, the design, the color was intact, but down here, it, it had it had withered. The curtains don't get torn from top to bottom. Just like your clothes don't get torn from top to bottom. But what happened was that the dweller in the Holy of Holies, consistent with the culture of the Jews in the Old Testament, that when a man is in grief, yes, it's gone. So it was Jehovah that was dwelling in the midst of the cherubims that came and tore his garment as a sign of grief 
that for the first time in his history he was separated from his son. That was the second omen. Are you still following? There was an omen that shook the ground. There was a tremor. They have to do environmental impact analysis because of that tremor. There was another omen for people that were concealed in the temple doing something like worship. There was a sign. And that sign, every Jew could interpret it. It was a sign of grief. There was a third omen again. Then there was an eclipse. Ah, the centurion that was a, a terrible unbeliever looked at Jesus and said, we've crucified so many people sometimes in the night. Nothing happened. But this man indeed is a righteous man. So he came also by what? Blood. Blood revealed his identity. That even unbelievers could read. Are you still with me? Finally, give me my scripture. First, first John. We are going back to that, my scripture. First John, are you there? Uh, six now. Six. So the issue we are talking about here is witness. So this is he that came by water. You know how he came by water and by blood. Even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And then the concluding statement is that it is the spirit that beareth witness. Why? Because the spirit is truth. Now, you see, the first scripture we read, John says spirit of truth. But in this scripture, John is saying the spirit is truth. And just in case you were not there, when, when John the Baptist did his baptism, just in case you were not there when the blood touched the ground, we still have another witness. It is unto him that all issues of witness have been zoned because he doubles as a witness of things in heaven and a witness of things on earth. Are you with me? Now, you see, we just read the scripture about witness in heaven. The word, the Father, and what? The Spirit. I forgot to read the other scripture. There are Three witnesses on earth. The blood, the water, and the spirit. You will notice that spirit is constant. So it's unto the spirit that witness is given. So there's a unique expression of God that is in the, wit in the spirit. Huh? Oh, you're not with me. I found out that in the Godhead there's division of labor. For instance, the Bible says, it is the spirit that quickeneth. That's his business. And so the Bible also reveals that if the, if the spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwelleth in us because it is his business to quicken. When we begin to study in the school of the spirit, some of the things we'll study about the Holy Ghost is his quickening ability. There's a level to which you can be quickened, you'll be able to hear the voice of God. There's a level to which you can be quick and you'll be able to see the visions of God, like a screen. You are a conduit pipe. You don't have your own abilities in this economy. The abilities that find expression around you, if you are yielded, are the abilities of the spirit. But they only find expression around several energy levels. So this quickening business is from level to level, from range to range. For instance, you need to be quickened to a certain level for you to begin to see healing come out of your hands. And it is the spirit that quickens. So just in case you need some quickening, you lost your prayer life, you need revival, then you need to befriend the Holy Ghost. And that's why I'm teaching you about the spirit of truth. That's the name Jesus called him. There is a, there is a method by which he quickens. Secondly, the Bible says it is the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is truth. Are you there? Now, that is to say that the ministry of truth is the ability of the spirit of God to bear witness. He's the one that links you up with the unseen world. He's the one that gives, provides the infrastructure for you to be able to interface, handle realities that are not seen through witness. And witness is in different shades and colors and forms and types. But all witness have been zoned to him. He's the umpire of witness. 
And so when the Bible says this spirit of truth is coming and what he intends to do is to guide us into all reality, the way he does it is by bearing witness. Providing a sense that is beyond our physical senses so that we can handle the unseen world and walk, we can hear inaudible things, we can handle invisible things and walk in realities that gives us much more advantage than any mortal can ever dream of. Can we go back to the definition? When he, the spirit of truth is come. So he guides us into truth. He makes us encounter spiritual reality by providing witness. Now, hold on to that. Let us see practical. Let us get a scripture that unveils what I'm talking about. That scripture will be Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. In Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, Paul says, Faith is what? Substance of what? Things hoped for. Evidence of. Now, underline the word substance. There is a substance that is furnished in your spirit as an evidence of things that you cannot see. That substance, if you check the word, okay, let's do some Greek lessons. Maybe to open it up, um, Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11, verse, okay. sorry, let me open my own Bible. Maybe I'm teaching something, teaching chemistry, and I need to substantiate. And because of that, I have to draw a diagram to substantiate something so that the thing can be real to you. Now, that's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. That's the best witness. You, you, your spirit, physical senses are not modified in any sense to give you knowledge of things that are beyond this realm. But, you see, you happen to have capacity to operate two realms legitimately because with your human spirit you can operate in the spirit realm legitimately and with your body you can operate in the natural realm legitimately and that's why Jesus had the duality of location in the book of John chapter 3 he says no man has ascended to heaven at any time except the son of man that is in heaven and he was talking with uh, Nicodemus in time duality of location so legitimately he was able to interface with the spirit realm are you, are you still with me and also he was able to function in the natural realm and it was natural for him to function supernaturally because he had the advantage coming from the spirit realm so because of spirit ability he could do the natural supernaturally and he could do the supernatural naturally Now, in order for you to be able to handle spiritual things and it's natural to you, you must understand the ministry of this spirit of witness. Because his job is to provide infrastructure for you to relate with things that your five physical senses cannot handle. He can make you fellowship with angels, provides the infrastructure so that you can touch their reality. And you know in your heart, beyond your senses, that they are there. But you cannot see them with your physical eyes. Oh, you can touch Jesus through the infrastructure he provides. There's a substance that he provides in you that is sufficient reality in your spirit. And you can handle those dimensions that are coming from Jesus without seeing Jesus, without touching him physically, without... Because when you say you saw Jesus, somebody say, what did he wear? He doesn't need to appear in a disclosure that is in that sort for you to encounter him. And he will not even appear like that many times in your lifetime. That is if he does. Because that's spectacular. There is no 
You can't fit a spectacular thing. It's not within our jurisdiction. Are you with me? For instance, I cannot fit Philip travels and disappear from here and appear in Agage. I can't fit that. That is spectacular. God will do that if he wants. That's his business. I don't even pray for it. If he, if he thinks I need it, he will make it available. But I'm not expecting it. That's, do you understand? The fact that you became born again doesn't mean you are God. There are things that belong to God. I saw somebody doing something. He said he's trying to translocate. I, I felt he needed the deliverance. He needed help. Badly. Hallelujah. But I, the supernatural is a promise. And Jesus gave us supernatural expectations that proves that you are healthy. As if you are normal spiritually, you should cast out devils. This should be a natural thing that happens to you. And just in case those things are not happen, happening in your life, then you need to admit yourself in the intensive care unit of the grace of God. Are you still with me? Realities that we touch. It is because the Spirit of God provides the infrastructure, the substance. That substance takes care of what you hope for. You don't need to hope anymore if that substance is there. And that's the proof that the things you were hoping for, it, it exists. And I can touch it with my spiritual apparatus. My receptacle can sense its presence. So there are several people that can walk beyond sight and engage beyond the natural and do business in deep places just by the instrumentality of the resources that are furnished by this spirit of truth please help me tell your neighbor don't look for the spectacular look for the supernatural during a prayer meeting prayers were going on and then this guy now closes his eyes and he, he doesn't know that there's a wall and he walks through the wall and he walks out and then everybody stopped praying but he was still praying in his own mind he measured the distance and he went again walked through the wall he walked out and when he became conscious they told him you walk through that wall Say me. Then he tried to. Then he had a challenge. Now, <laughs> he wasn't asking to walk through the wall. He, he just walked. God, that day, God was excited. He said, well, that's spectacular. <laughs> Do you understand that? I know that in these last days, God will bring the supernatural, not because you are faithing it. Not because you are planning. No. That's, so, that's in the flesh. You are, not, you, you are just doing your own thing and you found yourself. Then you find people resonating on frequencies that were programmed from the spirit because they have, uh, uh, ma they have mastered the handle of how to relate with that substance. So it's no longer eyes, ears, mouth, and feeling that they have as senses they have receptacles through which the Holy Spirit furnishes reality and they understand this reality by reason of use and they can engage God on higher levels beyond what normal mortal man can even dream and God enlarges your coast because of the fact that you understand how the spirit of truth guides us into reality these are the days of faith mm. these are the days where we master how to walk with God and that's why we need the reintroduction of the Holy Ghost the one that furnishes that faith it is by witness that he guides us into realities you can Go into the prayer place and wake up with an assurance that your job is settled. And it's done. All right? 
But many people will still be considering circumstances. I left that realm long time. I found out that it was possible to take advantage of his witness and to interface with realities beyond my sight, beyond my hearing. And when that began to happen, I discovered that actually in the spirit, you can attain to your greatest potential. I don't know how your journey has been, but in the spirit, you can be better. Much better than you are now. And meanwhile, there are issues that you cannot handle any other way, but the spirit. And that season will come in your life. It will come in your life. Make sure you have mastered it before it comes. There's a season that will come where it will be impossible for you to navigate any other way but by the witness that the Holy Ghost provides. This my lecture is supposed to have brief practicals before I begin to pray for the sick. After praying for the sick, I will do something else for 15 minutes before I sit down. Are you with me? Now, the reason, wait, let me even find out if God has approved this my practicals. Give me volume there. Okay. Okay. He, he has given me small permission. Now, hallelujah. Now, what, what I'm trying to do is, um, I want to navigate by that witness. You understand? Just read it. Just read it and tell you what I'm reading and then we'll ask for evidences of what I'm reading. Okay? We'll start by just praying for... Now, listen. May you not see me today. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. And so. I'm not trying to show. I'm trying to teach. This is the practical side of the lecture. How the Holy Spirit furnishes reality. And how you can interface with this reality. Without consulting your mind. And how any time you step out under that prompting, you are accurate. Anytime. Meanwhile, I need to tell you stories. Right? I've confronted Ifa priests before, and there's a mo with this prompting. I'm still alive because they've, they've, I, I defeated them. I've gone to shrines. That's what I'm saying. I visited a shrine. I said, me too, I've come home. But I came there by leading. Make, don't go and visit. Don't go where God has not led you. But I'm telling you, it's as easy as being prompted. And if you master it, oh, there's no limit to your rising. There's no limit. I live by those signs. 70% of the communication of the Holy Spirit is not in cognitive terms. Yes, it's not cognitive. Sometimes, it's just a little sign. And that little sign most times is illustrative of a great abundance of rain. Just a small sign. So can we pray in tongues just quietly for, 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 for two minutes, two minutes, two minutes. Like a man. Bria sose na mande ina na na broska benam. Bria sose na mande 
Brian so sanaman de man Brian so se naman de ho Brian so sanaman de na Brian ma maina ke naman ye Brian ska senina in the name of Jesus Hallelujah Don't go too deep don't go too deep yet we are still in the lecture so that the Holy Ghost won't take the service away from me. Don't, don't, go, don't go too deep. Now, for instance, what I see in the Spirit is that there is someone in this congregation that God has, He created you a vessel of healing. Healing. But you have not yet started operating in the healing anointing. If what I've said is true, that's the witness I received. Are you? I didn't create the witness, the Holy Spirit flashed it. Right? So now, the next thing I'll do is to ask the Lord, you that showed me this to confirm it. That's all. That's my job. He, he did the showing, he will do the confirming. I, I receive and I believe it and I ask him. Is that simple enough? All right. Father, in the name of Jesus, in our midst is a vessel of healing and I ask that you be merciful. Stretch forth your hand. Show me that vessel. Let your hand descend on 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 that vessel. On that vessel. Now, we are, still, we are still in the lecture. Are you with me? Oh, you are not with me. I said we are still in the lecture. Are you here? I command Lam Zahi Zahi Gamate Boke Nahi Zana Zahi Zahi Enate Mohima Zahi Neam Haine Mo Hinenati Menahi Zehana now I'm seeing a horn in the spirit and this horn is full of oil and it's dripping and I checked it it's, it's the prophetic anointing there's a lady here and that anointing will begin to drip now it will begin to come strong now it will begin to come stronger now it will be oh my god it will begin to come strong now you can't resist it you cannot resist it that anointing will begin to come so strong so strong it's a lady i see a lady oh my god you see anytime i see a harp a harp in the spirit it means that there is a music minister that is in our midst and your voice will be heard because songs will come from heaven oh my god and the anointing to begin to function as a minstrel in that capacity is it, descending upon somebody and it's coming so strong i i now do you know what I see now I see an angel and this angel is with a slim face I, there are different kinds of angels but this one with a slim face comes with a scroll. I've seen him many times. But tonight I see him whispering into somebody's ears. There is somebody here. God has chosen you. And your experience from today is that you begin to hear the audible voice of God. Not on, not on this ear, just this one. <laughs> Oh, 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 
about to take over from me ah somebody lost an anointing you lost a grace that is the mighty presence of God that used to visit you when you go on your knees and you begin to pray that presence so mighty comes to visit you and all kinds of stuff were happening around your life I don't know what happened I don't know what happened that you lost that grace but you see a double portion of that spirit it comes on you tonight it's a new day for you god is set to do business with your life oh god is set to do business is set to do business with your life he opens the door right now i see also that your finances were attacked and even tonight god is bringing that that restoration in seven days time God's faithfulness will be registered on your life. Ah, my coma. That there's somebody here, somebody close to me here. You, you, are, you are close. And there is a deposit of the hand of God that comes to activate you. You're being in the closet, you're being in the cave, and God is launching you out. You forsook so many things to stay in alignment with God. But tonight I proclaim a new dawn for you in the name of Jesus. All right, the lecture is, is over. You may rise as you begin to pray and say, God, heal my receptacle. Let my perception in the spirit be accurate. Let it be so loud that I will never miss it. I yield to enter into the stream of this economy. I want to walk with you like hand and glove. Let there be a compatibility between me and your spirit that is so intimate that I will not miss your voice.
Alasia braskemana le cosa mai la comana Tema Amen ali akila braske volano ma Aye 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 ya mamo Amen elo si na ma braske mana maina Amen omena ela 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 braske volema La frasca salima Alas que la va preso cana Ale, ale, ale Ego la frasca soma Ego la escalema Ayas come la sicama Oh, 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 oh of your spirit as you leave this place don't go sleep charge your batteries and your receptacle will pop up with that level of delivery you can handle things that are invincible spiritual knowledge becomes your portion and with spiritual knowledge, you can do spiritual warfare. And no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. For more online messages, check us out at www.soundcloud.com forward slash TBC Mainland. <laughs>